Friday. What is going on, everyone? This is the Plan C Podcast. It is Colin here with Cameron. And today we are talking about fake friends and kind of just friendships and, well, not, not friendships as a whole, but just the complexities of sort of friendships and being a fake friend, um, dealing with fake friends, and, you know. Social interaction. Social interaction. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, I don't know if I, uh, I cued you in there. <laughs> well, yeah, so, hey guys, Stoic Lotus here, Cameron. Stoic we, underscore Lotus. You already know. We are on YouTube, Plan C Podcast, Twitter and Instagram, Plan underscore C, underscore podcast. Find us on multiple platforms through Anchor. Platforms? Platforms. Come on, man. And on TA. Through, through Anchor, and I hope you guys will enjoy the podcast. Also, we are on Patreon, so if you have money, please give it to us. Yeah, and, and again, it's it's just to pick up uh, production costs around here. You know, we, we record in my mother's basement, Studio 66, as it's known. Uh, um, so this, the only thing that your money is going to be used for is getting better mics, better equipment, and so on and so forth. Uh, we hope you enjoy the pod, and here we go. So today we are talking about friends and shit. And <laughs> what we kind of mean by that is, uh, I don't know, I just, I had a I had a moment where I was thinking about kind of just people I used to be friends with and the reason I wasn't friends with them anymore. And I just thought like, wow, this could be awesome for a podcast. So I wanted to kind of get your opinion on it. We we haven't talked much at all about this yeah, um, beyond new, new topic beyond the topic, and you know I, I I think I like hinted at some things I would talk about, but beyond that, this is going to be an entirely uh, kind of natural conversation. So off the cuff, off the cuff, baby. What you got? Well, all right, am I going first or? Well, I don't know. I just. I'll, I'll leave it. How do you where, like where like where do you where do you start with this thing? Do we do we want to start with like fake friends, like people that kind of just you drift apart from? I think where we might want to start is maybe probably like high school. I would say. Mm. Is good that's, area. A, that's a that's a good place to start because people people don't really know what they like in life. I mean, they they like girls, they like boys, they like doing art but they don't specifically know what works for them yet yeah they're kind of going with the flow and i feel like in high school a lot of people's decisions tastes and stuff is like based on who's around them pretty much i completely agree definitely like pre-individual yeah because everyone <laughs> no nobody knows who they are in high school yeah, you're, you're figuring it out yeah and if you, if you did know who you are in high school, good for you. And that you're, they're probably making a shit ton of money right now. Yes. Whoever. Yes. <laughs> whoever did. And plus, middle like at middle school, everyone's shit in middle school, so there's no even any point talking to it. Middle school, I oh my god, I I don't think I st- consistently talk to anyone from my middle school anymore. Really? Oh yeah. I'm I trying mean, to think of people I met in middle school, but I, Snakebone, Julian is the only one probably. Julian, yeah, uh, yeah. That's true. I I just think that you don't know what your tastes are and you don't know what you like in life. You don't know what certain actions, how you'll react to them and just feelings you'll have. So I think that when you're in high school, it's kind of just who's around you that you're friends with. Essentially. Um, And just who you have experiences with more so being friends based on taste. Yeah. Uh, I think I think as you continue to grow up, you kind of learn, oh, you know what? This person is kind of shitty. Or just, like, things you like in people and things you don't like. Yeah. Like, so, some things are just personal. Like, you know, we each have tastes and, like, habits that you might not like in someone. And when you get old enough to be like, I would rather not be around someone that does that. Yeah. It happens. And just... Certain personalities, yeah, that just personality don't, types, you just don't you kind of with. learn to avoid. Yeah. Um, and some people are just assholes. Yeah. Some people yeah. are just dicks, and you just kind of accept it because they're your friend. You're like, oh, I'm going to stand by him because he's my friend. And then, like, nah, this dude's a 
a whole penis. Yeah. Fuck that dude. And I think when you when you are then growing up and it is then it's harder to hang out with people because you're a person who has responsibilities in a job. Oh, for sure. And you, your time becomes – you have to curate your time exactly. to the friends that you actually exactly. want to see. Exactly. So if, if you're seeing someone who, you know, you don't love, you don't, you don't love hanging out with them. You're just kind of seeing them because you went to high school together and you were friends in high school. But your tastes are different, then what are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing? I also think that people who are friends because they have known each other for so long – and that that is the only basis like you you don't have the same interests you don't like you don't you haven't shared experiences together you haven't like you haven't like confided in them in really dark times you've just been in the same place exactly circumstance th- almost friendship by circumstance i think that is probably one of the more faker types of friendship because it's it's essentially a family friend yeah it's it's not really genuine yeah so uh so when I was when I was in high school, I was friends with somebody and we had a falling out and like I was very very close with this person. I considered this person probably my closest friend and I had my this is poor not nah, not poor, poor terminology but just go with it, you know. Uh I I mean I had my heart broken by this person. Um and you know, not in the sense where, you know, I <laughs> it was like a breakup or anything, but it, it it was. It was a breakup of friends. Yeah. And, you know, when that shit happens, it really sucks because there's no manual for how to break up with friends. Like there there's 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 so much information out there how to how to get over a breakup with an ex, how to like get get over losing your job, get over losing your parent. But nobody really, like really talks about losing a friend and kind of what to do and like kind of how that happens. And you know, granted, before the falling out, there had been a little bit of drifting apart. But it still really sucks when you lose somebody who you thought was so close to you. Well, it feels like a betrayal. Uh, a lot of the time. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, this one billion percent. I can say that I felt betrayed. Uh, and just, there's a certain level of maturity, I think. Hello, garbage truck. <laughs> uh, there's a certain level of maturity that is just kind of there if, you know, if you take the right steps and you're like, you know what? I don't want to spend as much time with you, blah, blah, blah. And you kind of have a conversation. You're still going to feel betrayed, but if it's just a clean cut, pretty bad well what are the things do you that for you yeah would make you want to distance yourself from someone that you know is a friend yeah but then something changes um different interests also like yeah also like i change you know things Mm. that in high school i was like wow that's really funny and i could like tolerate that all day long now it's like that's not so cool like yeah you're you're doing this in a high school mindset and you haven't grown since x amount of time so and I, that's just another thing i think that to maintain healthy relationships it's important to grow together for sure uh because then you're kind of you're on the same page and you know what's going on I, yeah yeah and also like i've found that Specifically with friends you've known a while, the longer you've known a friend, if someone, like, breaks your trust in a way, I feel like it can totally, like, shatter even, like, a genuine relationship. Yeah, because it's – because we as humans, we tie closely – loyalty is essentially time squared – Plus um, action squared equals yeah. loyalty. It's I don't I, I, it's to bad. Yeah, may as thing. well just be time plus action. But but you know you know I what get I'm the vibes, saying. Yeah. Um, and I think that 
if you have known somebody much longer, you just the way we have been taught about loyalty, you just you kind of just you expect the longer you're friends with somebody, the more loyal they're going to be, Mm -hmm. even if your interests may split off a little bit and you don't talk as much. I still think that that loyalty is expected for sure. And I find that a good way to spot a fake friend is if they're willing to kind of do something that might kind of loosen your trust in them. I found. Can you it, give an example? Well, what would be a good example? Like someone talking behind your back or something like that. Mm. You know. Well, I think I think I think everyone, no matter how close you are to someone, I think people will always talk shit. Yeah, but like talking shit or like divulging personal information. Okay. To yeah. Others, there you go. That's that's better. that's that's more specific. Yeah. So like something like that where you're like, oh, I told you this, and you knew that you probably shouldn't have told anybody or we talked about that you shouldn't have told anybody and then you released said information. Not good. Like, like that basically is like some, basically someone saying like, I don't really care. Yeah. And, and it's, you. and it's a, and it's a trust issue. You know, if you can't trust somebody, how are you going to be close friends with them? Yeah. So trust to me is like one of like the most important things that for friendship, for friendships. For yeah. Sure. And I think, that I keep saying I think. I think that's wow, Jesus, look at that. It's definitely a verbal crutch for me. I'm America, I will America, Saudi Arabia, and Mexico now. Hey. I, I am going shout out shout out to our listeners in Saudi Arabia and Mexico. We really appreciate you guys. <laughs> uh I am going to attempt to get off that verbal crutch because I one hundred percent say it a lot. And I need to stop. <laughs> I think, I think, I think, Jesus. So, with, I I know I have definitely been a fake friend before. That's 100% true. Um, I, you know, that's just, that shit that you just do. Whether it was in high school or even beyond. Uh, you, and I wouldn't necessarily say I was ambivalent towards somebody. It was more so that I was... In my mind, it was like, okay, I'm tolerating you. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, yeah, what you got? Um, I would definitely say that I've been a fake friend sometimes in situations where one of my friends has a friend. So it's like somebody that you don't really know slash like. Yeah. And just to keep it civil. You, yeah, you, that like, happens a lot. Like, to be honest, like... I don't have that many friends simply because... You're busy? Well, yeah, I'm busy. But also, like, I don't fuck with people that I don't really like. You like, are all, you're also pretty reserved. In, yeah. Like, in, in, a, in, in, a, in a stranger kind of position. Yeah. Like, I'm definitely, like, not the type to go up and, like, just talk to random people. No. But if I don't fuck with someone, I'm really just not going to, like, pursue that. Like, I, 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 I just don't give a shit. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah, it's like, why? Why am I? Why am I gonna waste my time? Like, I suppose in high school uh-huh. back then, you kind of like, it feels good to be friends with people, and you want to be liked, and you want to be. I guess you want to be perceived in a certain way, or at least I did. You know, like you don't want to be a. You don't want to be known as a dick. No. Like we all knew people that were known as a dick, and it's never yes. good. No. <laughs> but like past, like especially college, like further in college, I was like, I'm not gaining anything by just being an acquaintance or a friend with someone that I don't really fuck with. Like, may as well just eat him out of my life, to be honest. Connections are really helpful, though. Connections are helpful. That's why you don't burn bridges. That is why you don't burn bridges. You just don't talk to people. (laughs) Basically. Like, oh, yeah, remember that time we did that? Yeah. And the cool thing is, though, I realize, is if you don't talk to someone for a while and you're still on friendly terms... The next time you talk to them, it's they great. might they might be an entirely different person. And, but it's you know? but it's also like, it is really great to connect with people who you haven't connected with in a while. Yeah, it's always it's always fun. So I dealing with people who you feel are fake friends or you know who you want to not necessarily be their best friend. I think it's important to have patience because that person is clearly dealing with like some type of something um that they 
don't necessarily know how to grasp with, or you know what? It's just a person with a lack of maturity. A person being a fake friend? Yeah. Fake friend. Because I was I was definitely so middle school and high school, definitely, definitely there are people who I just I didn't quite loathe them, but it, it was pretty close. You know, you you throw in a mask, right? Yeah. Throw in a mask, be friendly. And then well, you know, when you when you see the mask that it get it's just nasty. You know what I mean? Like when you physically see someone's behavior change when they're around other people. Yeah. Uh, it's so that's... it's so irksome. Well there's I find there's a lot of people like that because people love changing how they act based on the people around them. I, I mean like it's cool to change mannerism or like stuff like that is fine, but like people that actually like will change their stances on opinions and like you know like essentially change their personality just to suit whatever group that they're trying to fit in with it's like especially if that's not them like mm. there is the, there is the chance that that is them and you're dealing with the fake personality Damn but right. <laughs> inception shit but if you know they're faking it it's like it shows that you're a not i won't i don't say a low caliber person that's fucked up but like someone people have their reasons for not yeah people have their reasons but like that you're not independent, you know, that you're somehow dependent smooth brain on what, <laughs> on whatever, like whatever you're getting mm -hmm. from those relationships, it's showing that you can't be by yourself or there's something you're lacking. I think that I, I said it again. There you go. I think, I think, I think I keep saying fucking, I think I'm ridiculous. <laughs> uh, the way Again, the way to deal with these types of things, I, I, I think it's patience because pe people aren't going to want to keep putting energy into a relationship that they're not getting something out of. Yeah. You know? Like any, any relationship at all, whether it's like hanging out and playing basketball or smoking a joint or doing homework together. Nobody, nobody wants to be like the ass. Yeah. If you will. I think also one thing that I've noticed is people, especially with friends, people have a very hard time criticizing friends or bringing up actual problems with friends, yep. which I think leads to the fake friend problem. Yep. Because I found a lot of I found that was a, that was a, that was that was, that was, that was good that was, that was a good point. No, I found that a lot of fake friends are actually they used to be a friend. And then they found something that they didn't like or something that they latch on to about another person that they don't like, but they never bring it up. But all of a sudden it explodes in some issue and then you're no longer friends. So I have a story for you. Story time. Yeah, story time. Um, when, I, when I was in high school, I had a group of friends. So this is probably my senior year. And for those podcast people that don't know... I transferred to a different uh, school for my senior year. So it was a very much fish-out-of-water moment for me. Uh, and I met a group of people, thought they were great, um, and we got closer and closer throughout. And then we added, um, we added another, uh, an another person to our friend group. Let's call him Professor X. And... Well, I w we were we were we were everybody was all good. We were all good after senior year, after all that. It was it was great. Everybody was friends. It was awesome. And then about maybe maybe a year, year about 10 months after we graduated, Professor X ghosted me and a bunch of the friends in the friend group and we had no idea why. We had, like, no idea, like, when this happened. Nothing. Um, and it was, it, it was, it was, it was on me as to why uh, Professor X left. And it just, the way that it was dealt with, he, I, I personally feel, you know, you're allowed to feel any way you want. And if you don't want to be friends with me because of something, of an action I took and repeatedly kept doing, that's fine. That, that's okay. That's all right. I'm okay with that. But these are my actions. And, like, I realize now that what I did was wrong and what I kept doing was wrong. 
I, I didn't I didn't kill anyone. I didn't I didn't commit a crime, by the way. Um that uh, what what the bad thing is is out. That's an, that's another podcast. Um and he literally just stopped talking to us. Like just, there was no there conversation. Was, there was nothing. We'd be like, "Yo, Professor X, let's hang out. Let's smoke a joint, watch some basketball or some shit like that." Wouldn't even respond. Then it was just like, then it was May, and I was like, "Hey man, what's going on? You know, we haven't been talking." And he and then he told me his reason. And I, I remember I apologized and I explained my positioning because, I don't know, I, when I'm in the wrong and I know I'm in the wrong, like, I will apologize and I'm going to explain to you why I did the thing. I, I want to give you an understanding as to what the logic was in my mind as to why I made the decision I did, right? Yeah. I try, I, because I think that people who hold on to anger it's a it's a lot of the time like just out of ignorance i think for sure um and not knowing why somebody did something you know what and so on and so forth well it's assumptions it's assumptions yeah it's like people like oh this person did this therefore they're this type of person or they'll do this in the future and it's like i don't know i've i've always found like this is this is what makes me upset because I understand if you're upset if someone did something wrong, especially if it's your friend and you may feel hurt. But if you don't know how to approach conflicts, yeah, if you're not resolving your conflicts properly, you're just as shitty. Yeah, you're no. just as shitty. It's true, and I and and that was that was kind of what happened with Professor X. He was somebody who. Avoided confrontation, it seemed, at all costs. And this was this was not something that was, I guess, worth enough to confront. Because after after that conversation, we we've, we've never talked again. After yeah. after I apologized to him, he never texted me back. And I was like, all right, like it really sucks that this person no longer wants to be fr- be friends with me. But like, it is what it is. It's clear to me that they have not wanted to be friends with me for a while now. And not only was I ghosted, but everyone in the friend group was ghosted. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, if you... This is why, if you have a problem with someone, especially a friend... Within a friend group. Within a friend group, especially. Bring it up. Yeah, like don't talk about it. If you're upset about something, don't just... In the corner. Talk about that shit. Talk about that shit. Like, I'm sure... Like, if that person that you're upset with is your friend... Yeah. Actually... They will make the necessary changes. And they'll listen to you. They'll listen to you. And they'll be like, oh, I understand where you're coming from. Therefore, I will change my actions. And if they don't, then you can be like, oh, they're not a real friend. And that's why you can, you know, break it off. Of course, there are some situations, you know, like, oh, you know, I've had situations where a friend's girlfriend cheats on him or something like that. And then it's like... Then it's a complicated situation. It's a complicated situation. And, like, there are certain things where you're like, okay, you know what you did, you're cut. Yeah. You know, like, you're gone. And you know why. But if you... If it's not something like that, and it's something that's changeable and not like a game... Like a game-breaking flaw in their character, (laughs) to say... They're not broken. Yeah. Then I, I think it's... You should give someone that amount of respect to talk to them about it mm. from for your friendship you know you've yeah. spent this much time with this person you you don't have to but it would speak to your character if you gave someone the respect to talk to them communication is just is so vital oh it's it's everything in most situations communication and introspection are like the two things that i think are like most important in just keeping relationships and also just understanding things and just not being a general ignorant asshole that's my opinion that's no i think that's spot on because you know if you respect somebody you're gonna tell them why you don't why you're currently unhappy in the relationship right yeah you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna communicate that and you're gonna try and take the step forward if the step forward is like all right we're not gonna be friends anymore that's fine fucking communicate to me about it please it and and it's just 
I I know we did two podcasts on respect, but it it really does come to come back to it. Yeah. And it's like well, you want to avoid it because it's easier for you. I'm sitting here like wondering, 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 wondering like why doesn't this person want to be my friend? What 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 did I do wrong? And they don't fucking tell you until it's too late. And yeah. And yeah, why? If you okay, real quick. If you are a non-confrontational person, I I don't care if this is insensitive. Grow a fucking pair of balls. Well, just grow up. Grow up. Yeah. I mean, like, grow the fuck up. I mean, like, I understand if you have anxiety or something like that. That's a different situation that you might need to deal with separately. Breathe and that's through under- it. Understanding. That's un- that's understandable if you have like a medical condition. Now. Yeah. Whatever. But if you're just a normal person, that's like, well. Well, I'm confrontational. You're only confrontational if you say you're confrontational. Yeah. It's, it, it can be whatever your personality, but anybody, anybody can go out and, and hash out yep. conversations. Anyone can go out because you're going to need to do if, this in the real world. If, you, if you're if a non-confrontational yeah. person and you have to go to a meeting and make a speech, you got to go to that fucking meeting and make that and speech. You just got to show the fuck up. You got to show the fuck up. You know what I mean? That's just, what, that's just being an adult. That's just what you have to do. Yeah. And, and it's going to happen throughout life. I'm not... I'm not. A, I hold no ill feelings towards Professor X at this point. I don't. Uh, I hope. I hope he's doing well. I do, because you know. I. I hope. Yeah. You know, not doing well ain't fun. Um. But I really wish he handled it differently. Because you know what, I. I may not hold ill feelings towards him. But other people in the French in the friend group do. Yeah, because you because the thing is, in the long run, those are the decisions you're going to regret. Yes, like how you deal with friends, because especially if other friends are watching how you deal yes. with friends, because they're like, oh, you dealt with this person this way. Actually, well, speak louder than words, like, baby. Is this who you are? Like you know, it's like you're compromising yourself as a friend in general. Wow. <laughs> Someone just Jadel just posted a pic, and it's and it's a and it's it's a rage face camera, and it's pretty incredible. It's, it's, I think it's on the fence though, so we can't find it. Yeah, good thing. Yeah. I can't believe you posted that. We're gonna that's have to, that's awesome. We're definitely gonna have to have a conversation. That's that's a that's an amazing photo. Thank you, thank you for thank you for bringing that to our attention. We have a we have a we have a we have a new listener uh, in the room, uh, a wonderful Miss Diana. She um, she's hanging out here. Scrolling. She was taking some pictures for us earlier, making us look lovely. Very nice. I'm Thank cur- you. I'm currently in a Snuggie with slides and a hoodie. You know, good podcasting attire. <laughs> so, anyway, I just... I... I am... I, I know the type of person Professor X was. So, I understand... It was in... His nature to not be confrontational. He chose not to grow and not to communicate. And I, I, and I, I can, I can, I can rationalize that. I'm not angry at that. But again, people, people who see that action from the outside and necessarily maybe not have a neutral perspective, but have a different perspective, they also saw how you handled that, and they. Now think of you less because of that. That's, yeah, it speaks to your character. Yeah, that's what it is. It's exactly what you said. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's just a lesson to say if you should learn how to bring up your problems with people in a mm. way. In a way, first of all, that's not attacking them. You know, I mean, I'm, I understand if they did something wrong, you can do that, and they'll probably just have to take that if they're your friend. But generally, if you want to not be a dick. And not be spiteful. Yeah. You bring it up in a neutral situation. You say, hey, this is what I didn't like. This is why I didn't this, like this it. This is why I didn't like it. And I would like you to do this in the future. And the person will be like, okay, well, I did this because of this. I understand your position. I'm sorry. I apologize. I will make these changes. Or they'll be like, I will not make these changes. In yep. which case you can be like, cool. Yeet. Fuck you. You know, and that's when you can be go off after that point go where off, they please. where they've acknowledged their mistake or have or refused to acknowledge their mistake. Say whatever the fuck you want. You know, you do do, do what you do. Yeah, but it, you have to give them that chance, that respect. Yep. 
I have a I have a story as well. It's actually on the other end. Police. Where I was being, I guess I was kind of being a fake friend. Fake motherfucker. In high school. I don't know. This might be like junior, senior year. Junior mm-hmm. year probably. And I went to Edward Romero High School. For anyone that lives in Brooklyn, kind of artsy, big as fuck. Like, it, you know, isn't it the biggest high school in Brooklyn? Uh, I think besides Brooklyn Tech. It, we have like. Oh, four, yeah. Tech is fucking huge. Yeah, that's a big ass school. That is a big school. Yeah, but for, for perspective, my school had 4,500 kids. That's a lot of fucking kids. 4,500 kids. Jesus. My graduating class, close to 800, something like that. Mine was 60. <laughs> We both yeah. we both grew up and went to school in Brooklyn. It's a it's a different environment. So in like big schools like that, you might have someone in your class for a semester and then you'll never see them again. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like throughout four years. Or there'll be people that you hear about and never see. Like you couldn't put a face to their name. Yeah. So Yeah. Because I was like I was definitely like even more shy back then. I I was an art student, you know, art program kid. And we had a room, so I knew most of the art kids, even the ones that were a bit older than us, right? Right. So me and another one of my friends made became friends with the upperclassmen. We had this one upperclassman who do really... Give, do you want to give a code name? Uh, code name. Code name. Her name could be a code name. But... But I don't want to say her You name. just don't want that going back. So give a code name. The Queen of England. Nubian Queen. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, okay. That, that'll, that, that's all right. That's Are all right. we going with that? No, I mean, I was going to say Queen Elizabeth, but yeah, that works. Okay. So Nubian Queen, right, is. <laughs> I feel like uh, just. I, I feel like that's. Uh, is that is that. Are we going to get canceled? No, we're not going to get canceled. I just feel like that's like. That's. <laughs> that's the next big like Oscar bait movie. <laughs> I don't know. By the way, I'm saying this ironically. Yes. As to uh, all those niggas that wear the niggas hats. Yes. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, yeah, so yes. Nubian Queen, she's she used to be pretty dope. Like, she used to chill with the squad. She really liked us. She would always be like, hey, you know, you want to hang out with us? Blah, 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 blah. You know, friend shit. And we were kind of like, oh, she's she's okay. She's okay. You know, let her in the squad. She chill. Like, yeah, she chill, you know. <laughs> but there was a point where I, after like a year or two... And we started changing. Mm-hmm. She started changing in, like, not-so-great ways. Okay. And she did have a lot of problems at home and relationship-wise and personally. Poor Nubian queen. Uh, yeah, sad Nubian queen. No shea butter. But uh. but <laughs> the thing was is that because of that, we – her – the way she treated us – kind of was not great and kind of pushy and not uh kosher like basically I'll, I'll she basically had like a crush on all three of us at one point of time or another like where she would be like actively pursuing one of us and we'd be like nah like chill like we weren't like because we're friends you can't just be like yo stop fucking texting me you know what i mean like <laughs> but you like you know you're like hey you know, you like don't reply as fast. <laughs> you know, you, you you know you know the business. I got right? you. Yeah, and you know we would still chill with her in groups because at that point you're like chilling one on one. After that situation is kind of a no fly zone mm-hmm. for us. So I got you. Yeah, I and mean it's a, it's an uncomfortable it's situation. Uncomfortable, you know, it's just it's just not great and. Basically, we all started talking to her kind of less, and she was reaching out more, and she saw that, and... Wearing less and going out more. Kind of. (laughs) But basically, she confronted us in, like, or confronted one of my friends, I think it... I'm not going to say his name, fuck. But, yeah. Different Professor X. Magneto. Magneto. So, <laughs> not. I. By the way, the, these these people are not related. They don't know each other. We're just fucking around. No, Magneto is dopier. Yeah, Matt. Matt. We we we, we fuck with Magneto. We, we like Magento. 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 Cool. So, <laughs> Magento hit the group chat up like, "Yo, Nubian Queen just went on a diatribe on us, straight up." Care to explain? And basically, she was like, "Hey." 
all you guys are like um, fake friends. You like you never respond. Blah 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 blah. And uh, she said some wild shit. She was like, I know if I was trying to like if I was down to fuck or something like that. Oh, what? then you guys would probably be paying more attention. <sighs> And you know this, wow. that, and the third, and like that's I I I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, yikes! And she's like, you know, like insulting shit, like you like you guys are dicks, blah blah blah. Your blah. art sucks. Yeah, but she was like dropping all this shit, kind of like leading her on, whatever. You know, it's stupid shit, right? And then that situation. Obviously, that was the end of that friendship with Nubian Queen. I I don't I don't know if you can like rationally fucking do that. Yeah, like still be friends with somebody after they like rip you apart like that. No, you can't. Well, you you really can't because if you have any self respect, you're not going to do it. No. And obviously, we didn't. We weren't really vibing with her. Mm-hmm. either so it was low-key like a weight off her shoulders sorry newbie queen but <laughs> she doesn't know who she is yeah but the point of the story kind of is in that situation even though i was being the fake friend it's equally important that if you realize that your friends are distancing themselves from you to really look as into why yeah you know what i mean like, so, the, the definition of insanity is someone who does something repeatedly and expects a different result, right? So, if you're trying to hook up, first of all, with your friends, who are distinct, that is, distinctly that is, friends. That dis- is a messy situation. Distinctly friends. You know, and that starts causing problems, and you see distance, and you do it again, you start seeing distance, you do it again, you start seeing distance. And then you're like, hey, why are you guys... Not talking to me. I don't fucking know, right? Like, I don't yeah. know. Figure it the fuck out. You yeah. know? Like, if, like, you really have to be fucking dumb as fuck. And honestly, just, like, completely lack perspective. And you know what it usually is? I understand it's usually people with their own problems. Because, unfortunately, people that are dealing with their own problems don't see other people as clearly. Like, they don't even, oh, they don't even yeah. try to understand their circumstances when people are, when they're dealing with their own shit. And it's unfortunate because for that reason, a lot of people who are dealing with a lot of shit, Mm -hmm. like personal shit, are shitty to you. And you want to be there for them, but they're being shit. And you're like, stop. Yeah, because their priority isn't necessarily on being a good friend. It's kind of just to survive. Yeah, or not even just to survive, but they, like, because honestly... Survive is in quotes. Honestly, they're, I will say... This might be... I don't think this is controversial. Do it. I don't think it's controversial. But it doesn't like, matter. Just say it. Regardless of what you're dealing with, how you treat your friends should not change. And if you're doing so, regardless of what your problems, is, problems the o- are. The only thing that should change is that you're communicating about your problems to exactly. your friends. Exactly. Uh, ob- obviously. Do though, not change how you treat your friends. Those that you're comfortable with. The yeah. only. The only reason you should treat your friends differently is if you have more money then you can treat them better yeah it's never an excuse because i've heard this a lot of times where people are like oh i'm sorry i'm going through x y and z oh and yeah that's why i just treated you like trash and i'm like um people who do the equivalent of like slapping you in the face and then are like oh i'm really sorry i was like just going through a lapse that's not acceptable like I, I know what it's like to feel l- like the fucking worst. I know what that's like, and you do want to like just lash out. Rah, yeah, job, brr. But if you just like communicate to them, be like, hey, like for instance, yesterday, yesterday I was like, I was kind of overwhelmed at one point in the day, and I was just like, and rather than like lashing out at anyone. I, I did lash out at, like, my dad's dog, but that was just because he was barking a lot. And I was like, Abbott, shut up. Um, I think I told him to shut the fuck up, actually. Uh, sorry, Dad. Um, I, I, somebody, somebody was like, oh, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just hungry. And I was. And I, just, I just had to eat, had to get some nice food in my belly. And then I was able to just kind of just think, 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 rather than just being like, no, fuck off, like, 
I'm so annoyed right now. And then and then and then you potentially say something that you regret. And, and then, that lasts. And it, and not only does it, it last, sticks. but you don't you don't have a good explanation. You don't have a good explanation as to why you said it. So you just say, "Oh, sorry. I was going through a lapse like whatever. I was like re- I was feeling a lot of anxiety." Like but, but then you you have to understand that a lot of times your relationship can be permanently changed. Yes. Regardless of like cuz 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 you have to understand that that's not a good that's not a acceptable response no it's not because, because it's, you're not you're not accepting responsibility for your actions yeah you're not you're that's, you're not that's basically what it is and i feel like on the receiving end because this has all happened to us at some point or another and it sucks it when does. someone just like tears into you because of something that they're dealing with and they can't see, you're even if you're, you might even be trying to help them but they legit can't even see that like anyone else's point of view at the time and they're just in a rage or whatever it is or just not listen like nobody likes that person so i like and this is when i say when i said it might be controversial i'm talking about if it doesn't matter if you're upset for some bullshit reason like so and so broke up with me i'm upset or you're dealing with someone you're worth like ex- i'm super depressed and i hate everybody and you go off I like depression specifically is one thing where it's medical, so I give leeway. I but I can I, I kind of want to step in here. It's at, really but yeah. it's like if I'm being real, no matter what you're going through, you gotta be on top of your shit on how you deal with people. I, yeah, and I was just gonna say, and this isn't so. If you're depressed, you have anxiety, and you lash out at someone, that's fine as long as you're not like, oh, it's because I was depressed. No, 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 no. No, no, it's because of no, you. No, 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 no. You chose to say those words. Like, I, I've, there, I've been depressed. I, or like, we, I'm not we, been depressed. We, I, I am depressed. Like, <laughs> you know, the, it, um, and... Like, I, I have lashed out at people. I have lashed out at people, but I've never I've never kind of just shirked responsibility onto my mental health because that's that is then that's that's not that that is me not accepting my actions. That's me saying, oh, well, yeah, that happened. Yeah. Essentially, you're, you're basically essentially. saying because of this, what I did was not bad. You know, or like you're essentially saying that, or like, or it can be. That's why victim culture is so bad. Pushed under the rug, exactly. Because if you do something, never. I hate fucking excuses. I just hate excuses. Excuses. Excuses are the fucking worst. Excuse. I sometimes I can't tell the difference between making an excuse and actually giving an explanation. Well, I find the difference is if you're giving an explanation, you accept. What has happened? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair. While, yeah, while yeah, if you're legit. given an excuse, you're it, well. This is why that didn't happen. You're disregarding the yep. actual result of what happened. And sign off on that. That's one of the things where I think even I do that somewhat at times. Where you're like, you know, you did something bad, and you're like, oh, but you know, I was blah blah blah, and like that's like the first reaction because you don't want to take the blame, and that's that's normal. But in those moments, I think it's important to think yep. consciously like, oh. Self-awareness, baby. I'm, ma- I'm making an excuse right now. Let me take a step back. Because that also means if you're making an excuse, you're focusing on saving your own skin. You're not focused on what the other person's talking about. Yep. That's the truth. That's the truth. Yeah. So you have to be like, okay, I'm going to actually listen to what this person is saying instead of trying to keep my own, like, pride intact. Mm-hmm. And, you know. Accept responsibility. Yeah, and I, I, I think, oh god, it did it again. <laughs> uh, fun, fun, fun little game. Every time I say I think, you take a shot. <laughs> I, 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 that would get you drunk. Uh, when, when you don't accept responsibility for your actions, whatever they are, I think that is just such an immense sign of. Not being mature. Yeah. Because you you don't want to come to grips with the fact that you did X or you did Y or whatever. Or, or, or even that the worst is when people can't even admit they're wrong. 
You know what I mean? Like they they or can't just even acknowledge. Yeah, acknowledge that you that you're making like an argument that's like makes sense. So, sometimes, or they spin it back to you, or they like you know like diversions to actually dealing with a problem. I can't stand shelving problems. Mm. This is a me thing. If I'm dealing, which is probably like most of my friends I've had for a long time. And yeah, you I, don't you don't have a lot of new friends. I don't have well, I have I have some new friends, but also the but friends not, that but I, not a lot, not a lot because yeah. I don't really, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But also the friends that I have that I've had for a long time have been for like a very long time. Yeah, you know what I mean, like friends from elementary, preschool, middle school, high school, close, very close. And it's because when I have a problem with someone, which is rare, if I'm their friend, but if I have a problem with someone, I solve that problem then. You know, like at that time, because if you wait communication, baby, and you and you shelve the problem until later, like you you deflect or, you know, you get into a an argument where you're both yelling at each other or anything like that. This isn't this isn't like relationships between friends and also relationships Mm -hmm. couple wise and everything like that. Those problems will come back. Yeah, 100 percent of the time. And they'll come back worse, not only because. That only shows that the person's willing to do that thing again, even though you already have that argument, but also because you're you're going to be less tolerant to the thing that is making you upset. Mm-hmm. So once a, once a conflict is started, you need to come to some sort of conclusion. And this is, a, this is another thing in people that are bad at conflict resolution and is usually also a sign of immaturity is people that don't acknowledge that you have to solve problems and you need to move forward and they're not willing you have to be willing to make compromises you have to be willing to listen and actually get think about why you're doing things and why the other person is doing things and actually look for a solution Mm -hmm. and it's honestly just one of my pet peeves and people that are like let's not talk about this now it's like no 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 let's talk about this right now yeah, no. let's get this shit. Get it, get off. it done. I'm not dealing with this shit. I'm not going to sleep thinking about this bullshit. You know what I mean? Going to sleep Fuck angry that. is the worst. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not. I don't let anybody do that. I'll fucking call you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, any any last things to say? Because we gotta we gotta we gotta we gotta wrap up soon. Oh, we do. And I wanna up. I wanna do a little five minute thing on uh on my favorite football team. Sure. I guess um wrap up message is be mature, communicate. Yeah, like. You know, communicate, be respectful, try to solve your problems am- amicably, and, and mature. And, and fucking know? listen to people. Listen, 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 listen first. Listen. Listen first. Don't just hear. Listen. And, and, nah. and don't think about yourself when yeah. you're listening to someone. <laughs> think, try and, try and look through their lens. Yeah. Try and, like, try and do that. Okay. So... That's uh, that'll be it for just uh, friends and such. And I'm I'm real real quick gonna touch on the fucking New Orleans ain'ts, uh, as, uh, as as I'm calling them now. No, no, I'm just kidding. I love my Saints. Um, so they lost this weekend uh, against uh, the Minnesota Vikings, and they got absolutely they got they got their butts kicked on the line of scrimmage and just coaching mistakes all over the place and. The, so the the last play of the game, it was a touchdown, and the way NFL overtime works is if you get the ball first and score a touchdown, the game's over. So the Vikings got the ball in overtime, went down the field. Moose says hi. Um, went down the field and scored a touchdown. And on the last play, they had this man, Kyle Rudolph, a, a tight end for the Vikings, they had him sp- – Split out wide, which means he was by the sideline, but still on the field. And he's like six four, probably. And the Saints had a guy who's like five nine on him, and like of course he caught the touchdown. Like that's just bad fucking coaching. It's just a nice little microcosm of what happened in the game. Um, but you know, season's over. Whatever. I mean, not whatever. I. It sucks. But what I've I've got Liverpool, the, the Nets, you know Kevin Durant, you know you know good things are happening. Good good things. I I have been 2019 was an extremely blessed year in sports for me, so I just I just have to remember that. Um, I, I, I Liverpool won the Champions League, and all my teams were like pretty damn good. Uh, yeah, so that, that's kind of all for my little sports corner, um, Colin sports corner, if you will. Maybe maybe we can get. 
our sound engineer to build something up for that or something. Um, but yeah, you got any shout outs? Any plugs? Uh, plugs. Not. You have a show coming up, don't you? Uh, I don't know the exact date yet. Oh, he doesn't know the date. We're gonna we're gonna get you guys that date as soon as we get it because we want to support Stoic underscore Motive. Oh, I actually do have a shout out. Yes, please. Uh, I'm doing a album cover for this dude named Razor. Razor? How do you spell that? I got your ad right now. R R A Z O R R seven one eight. All right, you heard this man. Razor seven one eight. Do an album cover for him. Check out his music. Check actually out his kind music. of fire. Yeah. What, I, what, what kind of rap? What would you kind of rap? What is he like? Is he, is he mumbling? Is he? No, nah, like... he's not mumbling. You got you got bars. You got bars. Does he have? Does he... Okay. All right. You got bars. You got bars. Right. I'm gonna say it. I'm, All I'm, right, Razor. I'm supporting. Yeah. yeah. We, we will. We we we're giving you a nice little shout out. Shout out Razor. Um. Yeah, just want to shout out all you guys. Hope 2020 has been good so far. Uh, hope everyone is doing well. We thank everyone for your listenership. Um, anybody who has rated us, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Uh, follow us on Instagram, Twitter. Uh, send us thoughts at plantcpod at gmail.com. Yeah, anything you want for the new year, topics, whatever it be. Honestly, we yeah, don't yeah, get yeah, many yeah. emails, so we will definitely see yours. <laughs> this will not get lost, I can promise you that. We will respond. Yes, yes, absolutely. Whether it's in podcast form or on Instagram or whatever. Uh, DM us ideas, send us anything, check out our Patreon page. Uh, we should have some stickers coming up soon, so stay tuned for that. Merchandise. Merchandise. Well, nah, we're not merchandising quite yet. We're, yeah, just, we're, just, we're just trying to spread awareness. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. This has been Colin. And Cameron. Thank you so much. Have a great day.